Hi, I'm here today with James Towler. Um, he's kind of in charge of this beautiful facility, Wincraft in Gloucestershire, and he's going to show us around it and um, talk a bit about aspects of his career, how he transitions those various parts and um, lead on. Well, thank you. Thanks for coming today and uh, let's go into the studio. Brilliant. So, well, here we are. Uh, this is uh, Wincroft Studios. This is our kind of um, larger room. So what? this started out as an idea probably a, uh, about six years ago. Um, we've got a stone barn over there. Right. And then we decided we needed a slightly bigger room for doing rehearsals. So we kind of moved over into this building and started converting it. So, you know, ripped up the floor. This has now got a concrete underfloor heating system in. Did some kind of soundproofing, which is basically um, Denelm duvets. Right. <laughs> Fibre. Awesome. Yeah, because the down, you know, we thought may go a bit wrong after a few years <laughs> of damp, you know. So. Wrong. Yeah, be, be a wrong and duvet, <laughs> but yeah, you know. So if you've got to stay overnight, at least you can just pull one off the, you Brilliant. know, the walls and yeah. And then basically, I just kind of uh, draped it myself as well. We yeah. bought the fabric from I think what lives up in North yeah. Yorkshire, and um, yeah. it's surprising. Yeah. Well, it's it's just a really nice controlled room, isn't it? It's it's warm comfortable and yeah. not that cavernous sound that you'd expect which um you know again goes on i expect from your experience of dealing with a lot of live yeah. stuff as well as studio you've got to get the control in the acoustics yeah so that, that that was the initial idea was basically to kind of have a live room mm. but for setting up for a tour so if we look over here we're kind of prepped ready to go out on tour for one of steve's shows right so this is our actual stage setup um all the dimensions are down. We've got all of our monitor rack over there, right. front of house rack and desk here. So this is pretty much um, into some flight cases and you've got... Yeah, and basically just rolls out. Wow. So we kind of, you know, do all our testing here, making sure everything's up together, working, patched, um, the different feeds. Um, I have my other separate rack here, which is this is my HDX system, right. which is my studio system, because I also have started running all my kind of sessions in here. So I do quite a lot of jazz. Right. Um, I've had like seven piece bands in here, um, Latin jazz stuff. And it's such a great controlled environment mm. for actually cutting that live. And the musicians seem to love it because I'm not putting masses of screens yeah. around them. Yeah. Wow. And yeah, so basically it's a private facility, but we take in commercial work. Right. So, it, but we don't tend to advertise. It's all just kind of word of mouth kind of things. So you're managing this and I guess you have a couple of people helping you out with support in terms of engineering and maintenance and stuff like that, or you all just pile in together and well, everybody uh, does a bit of everything. There's a man of one. Is it? Just yeah, you? there's a man of one. I have a, a, a Brendan who comes out and assists me and cool. helps out and you know, right. helps me kind of get prepped for things. But yeah, the majority of the time I'm just here on my own. So I imagine you've probably become extremely streamlined in... Um, as a result of knowing your artist, because yes. you know, you've worked with Steve for how long did you say, 20 odd years? Yeah, 21 yeah. years now right. I've been with Steve. Yeah, brilliant. And um, yeah, I've been out here for 20 years, because um, my first experience with Steve was actually touring. Right. So I was hired as his keyboard tech to kind okay. of look after and do the MIDI programming on tour. Right. And then he kind of then figured out that I kind of, a few other bits and pieces, mm. and then he ended up flying me out to Nashville for a month nice. to kind of, you know, sort of studio out over there for him right and from there he then offered me a full-time position over here brilliant so. that's nice so you've you do I, I assume you engineer all of his stuff both live and um, yeah live and, and studio. studio yeah and you keep all of that in-house so that's, pretty much yeah. everything he's done for a long time has been your responsibility <laughs> yeah i mean um, we've uh, recorded every live show rehearsal and show is archived for the past 18 years wow yeah. Since we really started getting into kind of digital, started off with those kind of Mackie HDR machines. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and then they had the so. SDR, which I think was um, Welsh company. Um, sound. Oh, I'm not sure. Uh, Sonic, was... Sonic Solutions? 
Oh, I don't know. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, I think the actual the guts of the Mackies were actually their units. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. and it was rebadged as Mackie. And yeah. Yeah, I used to use yeah. an HD, HDR24 for a while. Yeah. yeah. And then basic, that's with um, right. Personas Micries. Right. So when they used to have those um, Digipre Maxes yeah. and with the, you know, soft limiter on yeah. there and... You know, so I used to have them in a rack, you know, yeah. light pipes up and... Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, and I suppose that goes to show, doesn't it? Because it's uh, I used to do a lot of that. Well, I've done projects where we've gone into studios where everybody assumes that you're going to have Neve preamps, a load of expensive outboard gear. And I've done a lot of projects using Octopres and yeah. 002 racks. And nobody's said they're any worse than the tracks that were recorded out in the States on the big stuff. So it's all about being there to capture the yeah. moment. Yeah. Y you know, the first thing is the person who's playing can play the instrument. Yes. Get the tone from the instrument. Yeah. Get the right performance. What you're capturing on is nice to capture it on something like an SSL or a Neve yeah. and a great mic, but you've got to be there to capture it in the first place. Which probably comes from the whole live thing for you, doesn't it? Because yeah. it's like once the show's happening, there's no, oh, can we just stop and start again? No, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, I need my shit taken care of, therefore I'm going to choose what yeah, i know works exactly so interestingly you've gone for a massive dante system based on rednet yeah i mean that all started um the first time i came across rednet was actually at uh, when stephen slate launched the raven in london right and i was waiting in the queue in some kind of um post-production place in soho right and the drinks and I was stood right by the red cement stand. Right. So, you know, I just kind of, you know, sat there and chatting to the guy and, you know, and that was when they just started with like, I think it was the one, the two, the three, the yeah. four, the five, the early, yeah. you know, and I'm just like, eh, I'm, you know, I'm trying to sort of think, you know, how I could integrate it. And, like, uh. and then I think it was like a year later, I met the guy again and he said, well, do you want to try one? I'm like, well, all right, I'll give yeah. one a go. And, put one in like yeah and then I just started thinking a bit more about how to connect multiple rooms bigger right. spaces and it, it started with a studio and I was on a, a digital design venue profile yeah for I think probably about 10 years and um that was great mm. because you had the integration with Pro Tools, everything, you know, so the recording was all easy, you know, mixing monitors from the front of house was easy. Yeah you know, the PQ system. So it had all the great flexibility in there, but it was kind of getting to the end of its life. Yeah. And, you know, I didn't really like the sound of the pre's and the digi, mm. you know, I was finding that, you know, on the big PAs, my mixes were collapsing down a little bit mm -hmm. because the more you drove the, the engines, the more it closed yeah. in. So I wanted to look for something new. And that's when I came across the Digico S21. Right. And then, then I was like, right, okay, I can get this Dante box, move this, do this, and yeah. yeah. So it was Andy Huffer at um, HD Audio who basically then started getting me started right. into like the networking side of things. And yeah. and that's what we've kind of progressed into now here. So and it's one of those, I guess it's a bit like a, it, there's a solution looking for the problem with Dante, isn't it? Because you've yeah. been able to then go, right, let, you know, what can I do with it? Yeah, I mean, it's just amazing how it's all kind of come together because, I mean, basically, on our live setup, we run six VLANs. Right. So I have a control VLAN, which I can always tap into so I can access all my different switches. Yeah. Then I have my Dante primary, Dante secondary, MIDI, right. waves, and then, like, internet networking, yeah. iPads, wireless. Yeah. There's a diff six different VLANs. So I have a Mac Mini at front of house, which runs my Waves racks right. for my plugins, which is interfaced into my Digico. Then I run fibers down to the monitor rack, which is just down over here. So I've, I've given up a little bit of control. Right. And we have a Waves bridge there, right. which takes the Dante feeds, and we can do monitors from here, which we use LV1. Oh, okay, cool. The comm system is yep. also on Dante. <laughs> right, okay. And um, so that's just actually into the Dante loop as a, as kind of yeah. So that's just um, Dante primary. So wow. it just comes up as a brilliant yeah device, and off we go. And if I take you over to the first, 
was Mike Banks. Look, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said naughty words to me. <laughs> the, the sort of the, the first bra- the stage brain. I, I, I like to just have them, which yeah. works perfectly because eight by eight risers. Right. This one fans out for this one. That one fans out for that riser, and then we have two looms which throw out. So we're festival ready. Right. Because, you know, after years, you just realize festivals become your worst nightmare. Yes. <laughs> because you have no control over the day. Mm. You've got 30 minutes. Um, we did Hyde Park this year, which I think was 80,000 people, and we had a 30 minute changeover. Wow. And, you know, you've just got to be, have your shit down with everything. So you just give, do you have your own desk for that kind of oh, festival? You, so you just feed into the moment. We ever do our own desk. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Totally self contained. So we're always completely self contained. Whatever we do, we don't do anything not self contained because Steve loves precision. Yes. And we have to deliver that precision to him every time. Yeah. And if not, we know about it. So, well, he wants to be put in his comfort yeah. zone, doesn't he? And it, it works for us as well because we know exactly where everything is. So when we start a show, everyone's comfortable. No mm. one's panicking. There's, you know, if there's something going wrong, we know why it's gone mm. wrong, where to fix it. And um, unless it's the Hammond organ and then <laughs> we all just panic and just get the spare out. And we've actually changed the Hammond organ and out on stage during a, um, a drum, fill, um, drum solo. Wow. Yeah, that's just lucky it. he doesn't play Mellotron, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Reloading tapes. Yes, exactly. That's really interesting, though, because again, I guess that comes, that really is a part of the, the most important thing is the artist being so comfortable. He's been through, yes. it's a testimony to you being around this long because mm. you, you probably look back and he's, he's gone through lots of people over his career, which is it's 50 plus years, isn't it? Yeah. You know, so. To be in that position of trust, it's like it, it helps you, but it's also a massively well, stress, I guess, sometimes. But, but um, yeah, I mean, it, we've got this thing now where he's coming out on stage, and I have a piece of music which runs for 10 minutes before he walks out on stage. Right. And as soon as I put that 10 minute music on, he's going out on stage in those 10 minutes yeah. on, at the beat one of yeah. when that track comes on, whatever's happening. Yeah. You know, there is no deviation from that. And he's a lot calmer yeah. because it's piped into his ears in the dressing room. Right, he can cool. hear it. The whole crew, you can see them suddenly like oh, that track and everyone Brilliant. gets into position. So it's almost like a kind of you don't have to tell anyone what's going on because all the crew know. That's really cool. You know, yeah. and um, the amount of calmness which that has provided for the starts of shows has just yeah. been fantastic. That's really cool. Yeah. But yeah, in this rack here, I've basically got three MP8Rs and then I've got uh, Kemper. Right. But we'll probably move on to Kemper in a minute. Okay. All um, good. Drum headphones, that's also an AM2. Yeah. And so, yeah, this is the sort of basic. So then if we just pop around the back of the rack, squeeze through here. We also have a, another Dante unit, DL2, for running the thumper. Right. That's brilliant. Um, Everything's just its own Dante. Yeah. So, thing. you know, we run the trunks, primary and secondary trunks between each racks. Right. Um, patch bay's labelled, cables are labelled, cables are labelled the other end, microphones are labelled. If brilliant. someone can't patch it drunk, we've got a problem. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> But yeah, so I mean, that's, you know, the basic of these brains, which I yes. stick out on stage. And pretty, um, everything's so road tested and reliable for you. Yeah. And probably easily, from a spares point of view, easily replaced out as well. And it's, yeah. it's all just off the shelf stuff. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's nothing. I mean, th these switches are slightly, they're um, Cisco switches. Right. But they've got redundant power supplies. Right. In, so these are the kind of backbone yeah. robust ones which I have for touring but then I do have Cisco switches which I can yeah. just program at a drop of a hat and right. you know stick on the network and you know it's just following the six VLANs you know as soon as you've kind of got into network switches and VLANs yeah it's, it's quick and easy cool. so then let's just take a look at this other rack over here let's pop 
pull the Leslie out of the way. So this one is basically another three MP8Rs in there, a red Pre-8, and then I run two Mac Minis right. on stage. Then we've got our wireless in-ears, which is fantastic having them on stage because they're right by the artist rather mm. than keeping them in monitor world. And then basically having the domes to angle them. Yeah. It's right where they are. Yeah. So Brilliant. their dropouts less. You yeah. may get drop out of monitors, but hey, yeah. <laughs> the monitor engineer is not the star. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Isn't that right, Brendan? <laughs> He's gone to make coffee. He's gone to make coffee. Good, good lad. <laughs> So what are the Mac Minis doing down here? What's so the Mac Minis, I have one in here which is a record. Okay. So basically that's um, just 64 channels just to record all the feeds. I record all the in-ears. So we can actually go back and we can assess if there's any issues of what was going on in the in-ear right, feeds. Okay. And, and the other one is just straight for synths. Right. So we actually have that you know, keyed into the M audio there. So that runs vocoders. Um, samples, synths. Excellent. And that's the basic setup. But yeah, all Dante, all in a nice little loop. Does uh, you say he likes he's he's ultimately in control? Does he like to change the set out at all, or is it like once it's locked in for a particular tour? I mean, we will move, change songs and rehearse songs, and yeah. maybe add them in. But I mean, even down to these rugs and the carpets. Um, let's see if it's in here. It's probably uh, hiding in our little Randall Bramlett. <laughs> Excellent. We wow. even have each rug measured out. Brilliant. And whether we're on a festival stage, anywhere, that is the precise measurements. So Steve's got the where he can view all the musicians. Yeah. The musicians, I mean, everything is down to a... Mm. Which means that all the looms we actually make are all just pre lengthed yeah. and so no silly coiling up of stuff and no. hiding cables. Um, yeah, so Steve's on a camper. Good. Which is, I mean, what was the breakthrough moment? Was he used to have the EC Tweed amp? We've had Cyber mm -hmm. Twins. We've been through all kind of guitar amps. But the whole band is on in ears. Right. And he always had one in, one out. And he was just never happy with his guitar sound. Right. And, you know, he said to me, he said, basically, you've got my guitar amp there. You're putting a microphone in front of it. I'm sticking it in my ears like that. It just never sounds right. Yeah. Kemper, within two minutes, is like, put it on stage tonight. It's amazing, isn't it? And he just realized that, you know, the Kemper is giving him what it sounds like when he stood in front of his amp. I've just gone through this with, I mean, Tony Iommi from Sabbath is probably yeah. known for the, you know, being fussy and really into the pure amp sound. Yeah. I put him on a Kemper in his home office because he hasn't got a studio now. Yeah. Anyway, this is amazing. And we've just been working with the Kemper, knowing yeah. that ultimately we could reamp if necessary, but he's yeah. like, I really like the sound. It sounds so smooth. It's like my old sound, he says. So, yeah. Isn't that amazing? They're just like... And it replicates it. Exactly. Yeah. Which so, again makes your job easier. <laughs> yeah, and Joe's Air. Um, I think Steve went one day, then we bought a second one, and then two days later, Joe's Air was on there. Yeah. We are actually out with Steely Dan at the time in America. Right. And um, Lots of humour there then. John Harrington. <laughs> right. He basically got one on the I same tour as well. Brilliant. So, you know, in like within the first day, he's like profiling his amp on stage. Fantastic. And, yeah. Yeah, they're a great tool. Yeah. They really are. But I mean, it, you know, for that control yeah. as well on stage and their ears, it just gives them the consistency yeah. every day. And probably, you know, spares. You only need one per, one per three, you know. Or, I mean, you probably have one for everybody, don't you? But yeah. yeah. I mean, again, it's, it's that off-the-shelf repeatable. It keeps the artist happy. The in-ears are also, we use West Tones. Right. We don't do moulds. Right, okay. So Brendan just over there. Wave for the camera, Brendan. <laughs> he has um he has a you know extra west tones. Right. Someone's brakes. Of course. Off the shelf, back out again. Yeah, because the stage volume is not that loud, is it? The drums are the loud. Well, yeah. probably the Hammond's quite loud. Isn't well, it? um, that's for sure. 
Oh, is it for show? That's for show. Well, we can always cut that. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, 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 yeah. I mean, basically, Steve likes it because of the look of it on yeah. stage. I mean, you know, I mean, it, it's a show. Yeah, of course. Y you know, it's... Is it not a real Hammond? <laughs> no, it is a real Hammond, <laughs> yeah. Good. This is, uh, yeah, 1959, wow. nine one. We we take two Hammonds out on the road as well. Right, yeah. First one breaks down, we swap them straight out, and then we maybe fix them the next day. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, we have a few little mods done to them. Yeah. Um, there's these kick switches. Oops. Which is here. Oh, yeah. Which is also linked to the bulb, so you can see what's going fast and slow. Oh, cool. Yeah, because yeah. of course on stage you can't see it rotating, no. you know. So there's that. Um, we have an effects loop on here. Nice. We have a DI output, which has got a low pass output. Oh, cool. And then I'll take you back and show you the uh, the actual one which you get to here. <laughs> right. Ah, even though it's um, the lights have gone. Go on. But yeah, it's um. All inside this flight case. Oh, cool! So it's all flight case up and mic'd. So and they do open to... up the door. Oh wow! How cool is that? So um, I've started using the Aston microphones. Yeah, nice. That mesh system is the greatest thing for getting rid of the wind noise. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I've I've literally just used one once, but I've heard mm. such great things about them. Yeah. That's really interesting. So yeah, this is we have this kind of you know backstage with a kind of sign on it yeah. saying, you know, please do not tap on top of this box during the show. <laughs> or tap in time. <laughs> or tap out of time. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. I mean, we've even started um, now when we're doing live shows where we um, we actually have the, this new system Steve calls outfills. Right. Where we have wedges on the side of the stage for um, the audience. Oh, cool. Well, people who want to stand on the side yeah, of the stage because that's that's the thing when you when you do go and see a band as sort of part of a family group or something it's all in ears and all you hear is the yeah. drums <laughs> yeah yeah exactly so yeah we actually do a mix for the side of the stage as well so cool. yeah that's really cool yeah. as if you haven't got enough to do well you know it's dante again isn't <laughs> oh, that's it true, so yeah. it's just an am2 and you know you just tap them in and off you go yeah. and i've noticed uh, these again these focus right boxes which you, you've mentioned before um, these are the ones with a couple of preamps in them that just yeah. like stunning idea i was blown away when they showed me those i mean it's just such a great utility box mm. when you've got a dante network yeah. because you know um i recently did a pill session here right so i did public image and um they all had one of these i was using the for di inputs for talkback microphones mm. between the musicians with their in-ears in so they have, they have to keep you know mm. You know, it's just great um, for John running his wedges. Brilliant. Because he didn't want to be in his, so he's got four wedges, mm. which, you know, he's got volume control. And, you know, because when he cuts, he likes to cut with a band sometimes yes. and do his vocals then. Mm. And then the album before, I had him in the control room with me and he was just 58 mm. at the desk with me. Right. Which yeah. it's just great when you're kind of working with someone and writing rather than having them stuck in a vocal booth and yeah. just a bit disjointed and talk back microphone and you know. Mm. But again, this is like it's that crossover thing, isn't it? Yeah. From what you learn from doing live is that people just want to perform, yeah, and whatever makes them comfortable. You you far rather have them in a room with monitors blaring or wedges and yeah. you get that performance. It doesn't matter what else is around, does it? No, not at all. Bill's not exactly the enemy. Exact performance is the exactly. enemy. Exactly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, if you haven't got a good performance, yeah. then you are, yeah, literally screwed. Let me see, show you uh, yeah, this, because uh, this is my sort of front of house monitor desk in here. I mean, in here, I didn't really want to do a control room because I just want to be with the musicians, yeah. you know, because then you're just a lot faster chatting overdubs things like that you know when you can actually look someone in the eye and you're talking to them and they're doing it it just seems to happen a lot easier yeah. rather than they're in a separate room and you're just in their ears and, yeah you know and it doesn't to me it's better doing it this way yeah. but yeah this kind of doubles up as my um little control desk for in here so you can see you know my kind of dante network going on here in control 
where I've got all my different devices. Mm. You know, patch you over to here. And this part is, you know, the actual Dante patch. Yeah. All green ticks, which is a great thing. Yeah, it's always a good start, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I tend to, on all my computers here, turn them off wireless and put them on wired. Yeah. And I just run a, a kind of wired network throughout yeah. this building, and then I've got fiber linking the two buildings with a 20 gig backplane. Right. Um, we've got a one gig broadband connection here for up and down. Brilliant. So we can stream stuff from here. But yeah, that's the, the great thing. And then, you know, I've got my the touring Mac, which is a record Mac, so we can, when it's on a wired network, you know, screening into it's just a lot yeah, easier. Yeah, absolutely. And then running Mac Minis as headless units, you can get some little HDMI dongles. Right. Which um, fool it into thinking a screen's attached. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> so then you just click there, and it's there you're working on that computer. Wow. But yeah, no, that's, so that, that's basically that's great. I mean, it's again, it's another thing of having having a reliable source of people you can talk to. I mean, Focusrite historically are great yeah. being able to pick up the phone to and get stuff done with them. Um, yeah. And I mean, I think they sound great anyway. Some people would go for more esoteric stuff, but yeah. it's like, you know what? <laughs> it works and it works every day. Well, let me show you behind the curtain. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> <laughs> so this here... <laughs> is um red wands which i bought in my first week of working steve wow and i still have them still love them yeah still turn on every day and have never failed me no and so i yeah i love to wheel this rack out sometimes and they're just going into a, a dante box for yeah distribution into the network or access to the network yep and then I have uh, Millennia's, which have all got the Dante cards fitted as well. <laughs> cool. So that's, you know. Brilliant. So, I mean, talk, talk me through, if you're, if you're doing a session in here, do you, would you be bringing it in yourself? Do you tend to get, um, as you say, you get word of mouth. Do you engineer everything that comes in? Do you, your guys that are here, do they? I tend to do it all myself. Yeah. I mean, um, a lot of the work I seem to get at the moment is jazz. Right. And um, it all stemmed from, we got a new sax player in probably about 10 years ago, well, probably over 12, 15 years ago mm. now, Steve, a guy called Paul Booth. And he's quite big in the kind of jazz world. Mm. And he came and bought a quartet. Right. And then two guys from the quartet, they booked their quartets, and it's just snowballed from there. Brilliant. So it seems that I just get a regular stream of jazz work. Nice. And... Um, they all love the stone barn. And when I said I'm moving up here, they're like, oh, yeah. But they all love it up here now. Brilliant. And I don't know if did, did, whether Jacob got it, but there's like even a little little area for hanging out up there and throwing things at people. Yeah. Great use of space, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, we've got a lighting desk up there because yeah. we've got um, moving lights That's hung just here. showing off. We've, um, <laughs> we've now got a... We've got a projector coming in and we're going to put a projection screen in there and start getting into adding more visuals into Steve's shows. And Porn hub. Exactly. <laughs> and, you know, World Cup. Ah, there you yeah, go. Yeah. You know, yeah. So and we've even you... installed the PA just to kind of, you know. Obviously. Yeah, yeah. You're waiting for the next Star Wars to go. Exactly. Out. And then the, the, <laughs> the interesting thing about that is, um, you know, I've hidden the amp rack in the corner. Yeah. Because you always want to have, get rid of your amp rack. Yeah. And guess what? It's connected via Dante. Of course it is. That's brilliant. <laughs> so he's got one of those Dante adapters on there. That's one of the awesome. new ones. So yes, everything is connected via Dante. That's brilliant. So do you tend to do much down at the other room now? I, I do all my mixing down do? there. Okay. Um, I mean, even when we're recording here and we want to go and have a listen back, we sometimes walk down to the control oh, room and cool. because... You can just tap the Dante yeah. feed straight down there. So, and because it's all on a hardwired network of computers, it doesn't matter which computer you're no. working on because it's all hardwired network and no lag and Brilliant. screens come up and. That's wonderful. Yeah. Did you want to talk about a bit of the oh. um, miking or? Yeah, go for it. I mean, I guess they're fairly, they're fairly standard, um, reliables again, aren't they? 
Yeah, I mean, um, Telefunken, MH2 Kick, um, Snares, Audio Technica AE 3000s, top and bottom. Um, use these little crash guards just to yeah, just lose a bit, a bit of, of hat around. Lose a bit of hats. Yeah. Tom's Audix, right. you know, D4s. Cowbell's 57s. Cool. Um, Audix on the Timbales. Hi hat M60. Four right. capsule, I think, on there. Hypercardioid. And then um, I do like these um, SCX25s, yeah. which are piano microphones. They're just microphones, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, I love it when everyone's like, but they're piano microphones. I'm like, yeah, they sound great on overheads. Yeah. <laughs> they're very cool. I like the side face, the side address. Yeah. It just seems to make sense with an overhead. Yeah, because I've actually got four of these, and um, well, We've actually started using one on percussion for the shakers right. and things like that. Got a, you know, M62, M64 again for the Guero, Congas of the Audix, you know, little clip-ons. Mm. Yeah, minimal stands is always good, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I've been getting into Triad Orbit has been my latest, um, right. you know, stand because, you know, in live, if you can do it with a clamp, you're having a great day. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, totally. You, you I know, do that in the studio all the time. I, yeah. If I can get clip-ons on anything, it's, yeah. it's the way to do it. And it's just like, you know, being able to just attach, you know, this yeah. triad to get that there. That's very cool. I did a session the other day where I've been using those Warm Audio 47s on a sax, mm. which I think just are fantastic. I'm a massive Warm fan. I'm but I also it. had the... Um, oh, Aston mm. microphone, which I wanted to catch as well, because that's got a bit of a darker tone, right. which is sometimes nice for the sax. And the triad orbit, so I could flip it on the top and get it into the right position right. easily, rather than like battling with mic stands yeah. after. And the droop and... afterwards. And... Yeah. Yeah, that's very cool. So, yeah, this I is... I would ask you what you might the Hammond with, but you're not. <laughs> no, you've, you said back <laughs> yeah. in there. So is it Aston's on all... I guess you're doing the top bottom and two bottom. top. Yeah. I mean, basically on a Hammond organ, I actually run four microphones. Right. Well, four channels, yeah. three microphones. So the three Astons, and then I take the DI feed. Yes. Because there is no bass player in Steve's band. Oh, right. Even though there is a bass guitar there. No. That's just to throw you off the uh, Yes. Scent. Yeah. Yeah. So um, does it all come from the pedals? All comes from the pedals. Brilliant. And the left hand. Yeah. So, you know, it's a bit of a combination and a bit of trickery, Jimmy Smith. So does he have a Hammond player as well as, or does he just go? He he plays Hammond for the majority of the set, right. 80% of the set, and does two or three songs at the centre position yeah. on guitar. Right. Or mandolin, yeah. back in the high life, you know. But um, trying to perfect organ bass in arenas and mm. festivals over the years has been something we've worked on so if i'll just take you back to the yeah. front of house and what we've done because th this has just been a, a fantastic solution i don't know if you've come across some um, magic eq or smart eq um i've used ah oh, no is this a smart tools thing or this it's not waves but it's a waves it's a waves plugin oh, okay. and it's basically a sonable as ah, a company okay oh they do the um the mio stuff dante to yes. um maddy stuff don't yeah, they yeah, yeah yeah and this plugin is fantastic because mm. it's almost like an adaptive eq that goes on the input and it's always running and searching so you basically eq it to what you want and then it adjusts. So if you see the last time it would have hit a bass note, it would have scooped it round there. Right. It's the best thing I've found for keeping the organ bass under control. So is that in tied in bodies. with your your mics up here that are analysing what's actually coming out of the PA? Yeah. Right. Cool. And then for the top, I've also got it on there. So, you know, when it's squealing, yeah. you know, rather than before, I was like, you know, diving into yeah. the EQ and trying to find the frequency in the room doing the majority of the work for me brilliant and i think it's on special offer at 89 euros wow that's really cool but yeah no i've just found that fantastic i've been using that probably about a year now kind of had that on the rig and so the um the, the waves multi-rack's coming through 
Dante as well. It's just quick turnaround yeah. out to out through. Yeah. The, so yeah, that's just on the focus right PCIe cool. card. Wow. Which is what I love about these Sonnet chassis, yeah. is you can have two PCIe cards on a Mac Mini yeah. in a one U rack. Yeah. I mean, it's they're quite heavy though, aren't they? I found that out when I put mine together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As long as they're on wheels or someone yeah. else is lifting it, it's fine. It's a bit like a Hammond organ. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. true. Yeah, what am I saying? When you're starting out, why would you? Uh, yeah, you wouldn't want to be carrying that around with you. Great. Even though there is a, a jazz guy, Ross Stanley, who comes here, and he's got a split Hammond organ, and he's got a motorized kind of trolley for it oh, that comes out the back of the car and the wheels, and you just literally it's remote control. Is he a golfer? No. <laughs> I think all he does is Hammond organs, Ross Stanley. He's just, uh, yeah, he's obsessed. I mean, I, he's, I would say, one of the best jazz Hammond organ guys in this country. Nice. Brilliant. Yeah. Oh, this is awesome. Um, can we have a look at the other, the yeah, original yeah. control room? We might yeah. take us down there. Come on down. Thank you. So this is the old live room. Wow. But, um, it, you know, it's become more of a, a dumping route. I mean, we've been... Sure. Um, I've been down at the main house at the moment, ripping out all the internet infrastructure, and I've been redoing all the VLANs for the house, right. and you know, gates, cameras. Yeah. I love a bit of networking. Right, love a bit of networking. <laughs> so yeah, coming down here to the uh, control room. So as you see, another switch on the floor. Right. This is the control room. I mean, it used to. Um, I used to have the Pro Control. Yes, in I remember. Here. Yeah. 32 channels with, um, you know, racks either side, you know, couldn't move in the room. Yeah. So then um, a few years back, it was when the, you know, slate came out, I decided to kind of downsize it all. And and then I, I seem to have got off faders. Right. I'm more of a kind of mouse. Oh, and, no. Uh, I, can't, I can't do that. Yeah. I mean, I, it, mind you, you spend a lot of time live with faders, don't you? So I'd always have faders for live. Yeah. But of course, then. Because you're doing live, you're in a hotel room, yeah, and you're being asked to do a mix for an advert. Sure. So, you mm. know, got into kind of you know mouse then, mm. and even the touch screen, I haven't. No. I've disconnected it because I've noticed that flies actually do affect the screen. Wow. So when a fly lands on it, your mouse starts jumping around. So. They obviously <laughs> don't have flies in California, do they? Where they no, develop no, exactly. <laughs> But yeah, same thing in here. This has got the Red Pre-8, so it's all just connected on Dante. Yeah. So it's all wired up. I did, um, let's see if I can find it on here. So this, um, I recorded earlier on this year. And um, the acoustic guitar was here. Right. Then, if we just... Uh, Vocalist was up in the stone barn. Bass player and drummer were up in the um, barn we were just in the live room. Right. And then. Sax player was in the vocal booth. Wow. Cut, all cut live. Brilliant. And, you know, that's just another thing for Dante mm. is, you know, who's comfortable where, stick them there, tap in, pre, off you go. And you tend to have the network kind of everything is accessing at all times so that you can just go, I know, I want that input. In yeah. Here. Yeah, because I mean, I have my Brocasti down here, and sometimes right. I want to put Brocasti on up there, so it's just it's wired in, and I know what the yeah. patch is, and up it comes, right. and you've got access. Cool. And, and on, a, on a completely gear related thing, I noticed the soft tube console one. Do you use that now, or have you gone yeah. off that now? <laughs> no, I, I do. I do. I'm really interested when people have this. I do like it. Yeah. Um, I would possibly say, I don't know why, but if I've got a gate stuff, it seems the only gate I've ever used mm. which I can work with. Right. And, and I is can't that, Is that the SSL it. one? It's the SSL yeah. one. Yeah. And it's just, 
And it does it. It does it. And yeah. then the other thing which I tend to always have is um, the Summit TLA 100 is always set on the compressor. Oh, okay. And I always like to just 4 dB. Mm. I think it was Al Schmidt I saw an interview right. with, and he was on about those. And he said he virtually put it on everything, just gain reduction of 4 dB. Yeah. And I've noticed when I do that, it just kind of, um, all my mixes sit yeah. really nicely. It's just, it, it all depends. I mean, um, gain structuring. It's just another thing, mm. you know, of, you know, zero. I got into this thing called, um, you know, minus 10 dB. Mm. So I've got a little defaulter app. Have you seen that one? No. Wave Rider, I think. They're all oh, okay. Under, New Zealand company. Yeah. Ah, yeah, my friend Austin was talking about yeah, that. Yeah, and you just click, yeah. click on the um, waveform and yeah. it sets it to minus 10 dB. Yeah. And, you know, I've now realised if I can... I do recording, I try to set all my gains so I'm not yeah, doing absolutely. it. <laughs> but if I get something in to mix from someone else who's recorded it, first thing I do is strip yeah. through with that. And then I'm just in control of what I'm doing. Yeah. I've got breathing space, yeah. I've got dynamics. And you know, that's the same game for game structure is one of the biggest things that people just don't take yeah. notice of nowadays. Yeah. yeah. Like getting getting your levels into the mic pre at the right level and just pulling them back, all that stuff, you know. Yeah, just giving really them some important. room to breathe and you know. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and uh, does this does this kind of make you go for a, or did you do it anyway? Make you go for a kind of a, a, a set of small amount of plugs that you use as a as a general thing. You say you have the soft tube on uh, on uh, sorry the TLA on there. Yeah. Um, and your SSL gate, you just kind of stick to the same. This is what I'm going to do because it pretty makes much. Me I mean, I, I, you know, I, I think I've been through that trying yeah. to get every single plugin out yeah. there, and I've now just realised there's just certain plugins I like the yeah. flavour of, and I know what I get out yeah. of them. And taking you back to your console days, really, yeah, isn't it? Very minimal. Yeah, I, I really just like to capture very clean, easy. Yeah. And then just a bit of sculpting. I mean, I, I guess that is more relevant to the jazz work I'm doing. Yeah, but you know, but I, I, um, all the live stuff, you know, just keeping. You know, if you look at all my live multi tracks, everything's set to minus ten dB. Yeah. When you go through and look at them afterwards, um, we can look back at the multi tracks. We can see if a microphone's about to fail or if something's gone wrong or yeah. if it's dipped. You know, and then we can really do a in depth analysis of what went wrong. Yeah. And know why it went wrong and make sure it doesn't go wrong again. Yeah, that's really important. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Brilliant. What a beautiful place you have. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, one of my favourite things in here is the, the Graham audio speakers. Right. Um, I've known Paul Graham for, God, that must be about 20 odd years. Right. And he's um, used to buy like secondhand SSLs. Okay. And um, I've always kind of stayed in touch with him. And then about five, six years ago, he said to me, oh, I've been to the BBC clearing out some gear and I've got the rights to build the LS59. And I oh, went, wow. oh, okay, right, yeah. And um, then he got in with Derek Hughes, who was at Spendor. And, right. you know, his dad was also involved at the BBC sure. in that old design period. And um, they built these for me. Nice. And the serial number on the back is JT1. Of course it is. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I don't actually know if another pair of these speakers exist or he's bought, built them because they're not available on his website. Right. But um, yeah, he are built they, these for me. Are they ported or are they? Yeah, they've got a port on the back. Um, they've also got those HyperX modules, right. amps, which are the Class D, right. which um, is it those kill speakers you use? Right, I don't. Yeah, well, I mean, um, I mean, I just they're, they're great. great, and um, it's the first set of monitors I've had in this room that work for this room. Mm. You know, rather than I've just been through just so many different pairs, and it's like, mm. eh, you know, they're too bassy there, yeah. that's not there, and I've just plonked them in there, and like, oh, mm. it's great, mm, it's brilliant. You know, haven't had to run any of those, you know, room analyst software yeah. microphones and do an adjustment. I don't think that ever works massively well, does it? It's like when I've done it, I've always been disappointed with the speaker afterwards. Yep. Yeah. 
but you've got a great design control room and you know great speaker stands as well it's like everything's a good starting spot i mean even the yeah. shape of the room is wonderful isn't it and then we get a beautiful view you down do. the valley even though if we uh you know that's for dinner later yeah yeah <laughs> we'll be um yeah selling these yeah <laughs> 10 pence yeah fly fishing flies yeah <laughs> they're too small aren't they yeah, and it's um, it's a residential studio. Right. Okay. We've got bedrooms here, so we can sleep up to kind of ten people. That's cool. You know, mm. the stone barns there to kind of relax in. Mm. Nice. So putting you on the spot, is there is there anything that you would, you know, anybody watching this, you could give advice to people starting out or trying to, you know, get on in their career a bit? Something you're taking from being so much in the two camps you know at least the two camps of live, live and studio, studio you know yeah i mean it's um i suppose you've just got to kind of be useful yeah you've got to know when to be quiet and be useful and you know as long as you're there to prove yourself when something goes wrong that mm. you can solve that problem mm. then you know that's the way into this industry yeah. you know the way into the industry isn't telling people what they're doing wrong no. when they're producing. You know, it's it's you know. That's your job now. Yeah, that, well, <laughs> you know, that's kind of supporting yeah, exactly. your producer or yeah. you working for, or just trying to make it better experience for them. And you know, reading the people, reading yeah. their moods, reading the vibe in a room. You know, it's being perceptive, not staring at your yeah. telephone. You know, there's there's nothing worse than you know you've got an assistant in the room they're just like that glued to their phone mm. you know looking at youtube videos on facebook yeah. you know you there was a rant on our group just the oh. other day about assistants not wanting to be in the control room anymore and when they are they're on their phone and they seem to think that you're i don't know you're um uh, get, you're, you're lucky to have them there you know and it's like it was a good rant by the you know yeah. very very good guy, <laughs> and it's like that, that's yeah. what it's like nowadays. It's a shame. It, I mean, yeah. I mean, I've tried getting assistance through, mm. and you know, I mean, Brendan is an exception, but yeah. he was at Modern World probably. I think it was about 2012 when I was um, right. doing the first Pill album, and I met him there, and he was just so enthusiastic mm. and wanting to help do edits, just you know, but not being too mm. overbearing. Yeah. On things and just being helpful and it was years later I'd done an album and he'd heard it and he just sent me an email to say sounded fantastic mm. great job and I thought you know what yeah he just he's got the right mentality yeah. and it, it you know he's always the last one on stage checking microphones positions you know which kind of takes it off me because yeah. I can now rely on Brendan yeah. to make sure they're going to be in the right spot and he's got, he'll have a great career ahead of him, won't he? Because well, he's, he's learning He's already ropes. building a great career That's for brilliant. himself in London on, you know, projects. Right, so, good. you know, it's, uh, I'll probably lose him as an assistant. And yeah, <laughs> I need to shackle him. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. <laughs> put Don't some the good back, ones yeah, go. Put yeah. some shit out about him on yeah, the internet. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> It's okay, Brendan. Yeah, yeah, he'll be fine. Yeah. No, that's brilliant. Yeah, because you can spot yeah. them a mile off, the ones that you would never want near you. Yes. And the ones that do shine are normally the ones that you suddenly like, ah, Oh, hang on, he's a bit quiet, but he's just sorting shit. Yeah, and, and that, that I think is the, the best way in, whether yeah. it's live or studio. It's, yeah. you know, because especially on live, you know, you've got to sit on a tour bus with them. You yeah. don't want the person who's basically up at six in the morning still drinking from the night no. before finishing off your favourite red wine. Mm. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. You know, and um, because you, you're living in real confined yeah. places and you're working for months on end together, and so the personality has to fit. Yeah. And that's also for musicians as well as for, um, you know, crew. Yeah. Oh, it's a massive people business, isn't it? I mean, it's yeah. what, dealing with creative people, that sometimes they'll get up, they're, they're in a mood. They're not really it's just something in their day is not quite right for them, and you have yeah. to you have to accept that you're going to help them through it. You know, exactly. So, yeah, yeah, it's a real people thing. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much. That's well, been no um, fantastic. Wonderful. Awesome. Great to meet you. Good luck on the tour. <laughs>